Hey guys, welcome back to another Arc Dev Kit tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at placing foliage, which is trees, rocks, metal nodes, crystal nodes, all of that stuff. We're going to look at placing that and how to set it up correctly. And then we'll obviously go and have a play and make sure it all works. It's really not a difficult task, so I'll just go through it really quickly on screen. And you probably only need to watch this video once and you should be able to work it out for yourself. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, so the first step for this is we need to go into our foliage tool up here. This is going to effectively allow us to paint foliage onto the map. Foliage being rocks, trees, metal nodes, all that sort of stuff. So, you can see here it says drag static meshes from the content browser into this area. So, we're going to go down to our content browser here. And we're going to search for, let's say, palm trees. Let's see what we've got. So, here we go. We've got our big palm underscore sm. And then here we've got our big palm underscore sm settings. So we're going to need both of these files. First off, we're going to need this static mesh and we're going to just going to drag it into our paint tool. And there we go. You can see it's come up here. Now we need to set up the settings for it. So we're going to click on the settings here and then we're going to go up to here where it says not using shared settings. And we're going to click this button here. And what that's going to do is it's going to copy whatever we've got selected in the content browser and it's going to put it in there for us. So we're going to click that button. Might take a second, but it will copy those settings into the paint tool for us. There we go. So now we've done that, we need to just finish off those settings. Unfortunately, it doesn't copy all of them. It's no big whoop. We just have to open this file and copy between them. So we're just going to double click on this, bring up this window here. Then we're going to click here and show instance settings. And these are the ones that haven't copied over and we have to do ourselves. So we need to scroll down in this window to clustering. Here we go. So we're just going to replicate everything on here as it appears here. So replicate this component. And then damage FX act to spawn tree harvest impact emitter. Let's go here and we're going to search for tree harvest impact emitter. There we go. Then these are all OK. Scroll down to the attached component class. We're going to do a search once again, this time for wood harvest component underscore extra wood. Find that one. There we go. And down a bit. Here we go. Destroyed mesh actor class. We're going to search this time for tree falling blueprint. There we go. Then we're going to tick this box here because it is a falling tree. And then override destruction materials. We're going to add two elements because there's two elements here. Let's expand this. So we've got big palm underscore trunk. Let's have a look. There we go. Big palm underscore trunk instance. And then this one, big palm underscore atlas. There we go. So scroll down a bit to the culling. Start cull distance. We've got 215,000. That's all right. 275,000. There we go. And then these are all OK as well. So the shadows are all all right. And then we're going to go down to the collision here. Block all except IK. So let's find that one. Here we go. And then this last bit receives decals. Yes. There we go. That's that bit done. So now we're just going to. So now we're just going to go back to our painting settings just to make that window a little bit smaller and we'll close this. And that's us done with that for now. So now we're moving on to actually painting this foliage onto the map. This really isn't a difficult task. It's no more tricky than painting your map in the first place. All you've got to do is set up your brush size and paint density. The density is how much foliage is going to spawn in the area of your brush size. I used to keep mine around halfway, but it really depends. And then a raised density, you don't really need to worry about that yet. So now we're just going to click and drag and see that it is spawning in some of these trees for us. So I'm going to spawn these in and then we're going to click play and make sure they all work OK. Here we go. So let's run down and do some classic arc starting stuff. 
Punch some trees, get our thatch so we can build a pick. And there we go, you can see the trees are falling. It's all good. Let's get a few more thatch. Should be enough. There we go. Now let's run over, try this tree. Make sure all's working well. And there we go. So, I'm going to spawn a few more things on here, maybe some rocks, a couple of metal nodes, and I'll probably time lapse it for you and I'll bring you guys back when it's all done and we'll see how our map's looking. Alright guys, so I just thought I'd bring you back in quickly. Basically, when you are placing the rocks on your map, there are a couple of extra steps you need to do. First of all, obviously there's quite a few things in the game called stone and rock because of, you know, the stone tools and all that. So, it's the quickest way to find the meshes and the settings for them is actually to go to the menu here and just scroll down until you find ultimate rocks and then go in meshes. And they're all in there. They also have a destructible mesh, which is the one with the pink line on it. And you actually have to put that in your instance settings. Let me just show you quickly. As you can see here, under destroyed mesh, there is actually this destructible mesh that you put in there. So it's important to remember that, otherwise it's obviously not going to quite look like it would in the real game. If you haven't got this destroyed mesh in there. So I'm working on Ultimate Rock 5 at the moment. So in the destroyed mesh... I'm going to click on Ultimate Rock 05 Destroyed Mesh and then this little arrow here and that's going to copy it in for me. So I just thought I'd jump in here and just, you know, remind you guys of that so it didn't confuse you at all. <laughs> Alright guys, so there we go. I've done a few little bits. I just put in some rocks and some crystals. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the crystals working. I wasn't working on it for very long. Um, but I'll, I'll have another go another time and I'll update you guys in the next video. I just need to have a look around and actually experiment with the settings a bit more, but I didn't have time to today. But there we go. I've done a little bit of a design on the map now. If we click play, we can have a run around and you should be able to see that actually, you know, everything's working. Obviously, you can harvest the trees like we could in the last one. We already knew that. But let's get some thatch going so we can get a pick. We've seen a couple more. And then we can go out and try the rocks and make sure they're all working okay. There we go. So let's run over to this rock over here. There we go. You can see we're getting flint and stone like you would in Ark. It's all working okay. Obviously, these are on official gather rates, so it's a little bit slow, but it's all right. And there we go, getting a little bit of metal as well. But yeah, this is all working okay now, apart from the crystals. But like I said, I'll have another go with them and I'll update you guys in the next video. But I mean, it's all so self explanatory with the foliage. It probably just needs a little kind of five ten minutes to sit with it and just play around with the settings and see what works. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please leave a like, comment, and of course subscribe. I think in the next episode we're going to be looking at dino spawns. So obviously it's a little bit more complicated. It's a few more variables and things that can go wrong. We just got to take it a little bit slow and get through it, and it's all right. So I'll see you guys in the next one.